Stay tuned for today's antidote brought to you by the Renegade Success Network. Today's antidote features a healthy dose of thought-provoking insights and information for business owners, entrepreneurs, leaders, and nonprofit professionals. Each day since March of 2020, this program has offered that one thing to help you continue on your own unique pathway to success. And now, Renegades, we bring you Bob Graham and Tom Brush. Do last year, last one of the year. I messed it up. Can I do that again? Do, 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 do. 2020 closer. Nice. <laughs> it only took two takes. That's pretty good. <laughs> Well, good morning, everyone. Hope that uh, you are all ready. Maybe if you're listening, you've already had 2021 end or 2020 end. Is that possible? Would Australia yeah, have already I mean, had? Yeah, I think so. I, I think I think we could turn on the news and they'd be showing fireworks or something from okay. faraway places. Yeah. Anyhow, good morning, everybody. I'm Tom Brush, and this is Bob Graham, and we're here for another edition of today's antidote, where we try to provide that one thing. To help you move forward that maybe you, today maybe you use it tomorrow next week or next year all week we have been talking about taking stock shocking that at the end of the year we're looking back on what has happened throughout the year and how we can evaluate that we move quickly through the we move through the process this week of looking at our destinations that we've reached um, obstacles that we faced yesterday we looked at opportunities and I think one of the things that I've really come to realize is that with every potential opportunity, there are always obstacles that can get in our way. And so I think today we're going to, I don't think, today we're going to talk a little bit about those obstacles and how do we try to identify what those obstacles are that might get in the way of our opportunities. <clears throat> because an opportunity is only as good as, I think, the, how accessible or possible it might be because many times with those opportunities there are huge obstacles that stand in your way that if you don't think about them you may head down a path that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense and if you're not aware which sometimes you can't be aware um, you can head down a rabbit's hole and not get there so how do you look at when you're looking at your opportunities bob how do you think about obstacles well, first, I'm going to use a metaphor because I think it breaks this down into a little more understandable way. If we were going to travel across the country, you and I both live in the Baltimore area, Tom, and if we were going to go to California, I'd use my GPS. And it would point out to me when there was road work, when I should switch routes, when I should go south, when the weather might be bad. It would tell me when the police cars might be ahead and I need to slow down. But as good as my GPS is, it doesn't always capture everything. There can be an instantaneous car crash right ahead of me, and next thing you know, the road's closed. And I've got to deal with that. It's not like I can go, oh, wait, I'm on the wrong road, turn around with all the cars behind me. And I think that's what we've got to think about with our businesses and with anything we're trying to accomplish. There are going to be unexpected things. Where I try to focus my attention, frankly, is on the things that I can expect. So for instance, as we look at 2021, starting in a day, I'm looking at two, possibly three scenarios with my business. One scenario where the pandemic continues all year. A second scenario where the pandemic might end by the middle of the year and people start gathering more in person and maybe conferences come back. Maybe uh, companies want me to come into their office and do trainings. I'm also looking at a scenario where by February 1st, the vaccine's been given to everyone and everything's wide open and it's the way it was two years ago. Now, I don't buy that one. I don't think that one's realistic. But in my mind, I'm planning for all three of those scenarios. And so when I make a business decision to join an association, to invest in business cards, to do those types of things. I'm playing those against those scenarios. It doesn't mean I'm gonna be absolutely right, but those are potential challenges. What's the use of me having a stack of a thousand business cards if everything's gonna be over Zoom? What's the use of me having 500 copies of a book if everything's gonna be over Zoom? 
because typically I sell a book in, if I'm in a building doing a training or something, I sell the book from the back of the stage at the end of the event. That's just, so it's calculating. And what I've come to realize, probably the biggest lesson I've gotten from the last year is I'm not going to be 100% correct. But if I do nothing, I'm guaranteed to be 100% wrong. And so any action I take, looking at the variables that are out there, the obstacles that could come along, is going to get me closer to the answer that's going to achieve my goals. Does that make any sense at all? No, absolutely. I think it does. I think it's. <clears throat> I think what's hard sometimes is that without getting into the specifics, which you did a little bit about it, you know, with your business in the three scenarios that are potentially out there, and I'm sure there are a hundred more. Oh uh, yeah. But I think that if we all take a look at what's one thing that we want to do next year, next week, next month, whatever our next destination is. And, and try to say, okay, what could potentially get in my way? What could make a difference? You know, and so if I'm saying, okay, I'm going to launch this product. Great. I'm going to open a new location. All right. If I'm going to open a new location, what might be the challenges? How do I, am I, could I have supply issues? Post office hasn't been great. UPS has been overwhelmed with all the Amazon shipping. So is that going to impact my ability to get the supply that I need to a different location? Now, the other thing you could say is the opportunity is there are less people driving the roads. So my ability to take it myself from one place to another is going to have, there might be less traffic. So that might be easier to overcome. And I think so often we set goals, intentions, whatever you want to call them, for the new year without stepping back and saying, where might there be hidden roadblocks in this? Yeah, this sounds great. <clears throat> and still there are things that aren't there. You know, I was working with an organization recently and they were talking about events. You know, it was a nonprofit organization. What will events look like next year? It's hard to tell, you know, and what are the challenges of saying, okay, we're gonna have an event in March. Probably right now, that's that's not, depending on the type of event, if it's in, planned in person, might not be happening. So you might have to say, okay, well, maybe we need to get rid of this event and do something different. Well, one of the obstacles could be is that one of your best supporters loves the event. And they might not be as interested in something else that would be new. And so I think that it's just something that we should always be considering as we are looking at opportunities, goals, intentions, uh, resolutions, all of those things, what might get in the way? Like I might say, I want to lose weight next year because I've been sitting around way too much. Well, if the gyms are never open or if they're shut down or if they're limited, it's going to be a lot harder. I'm going to have to find a new way to try to achieve that goal. Are you trying to play to come over to my house and use my rower? Is that what this is, Tom? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, although there's an opportunity, correct? That I had of, of course, Tom. My basement is your basement. <laughs> right. And, and so I think that's just one of those things that we often overlook. You know, we think so much. We're so excited. It's a new year. It's a new time. It's a new whatever quarter. What are all the great things that we can do? And I think we get so excited about those opportunities and what they could look like and what they might mean for us, our business, our team, our clients, our organization, that we sometimes don't step back and say, huh, as great an idea as that is, the opportunity to overcome it is too much. The technology, the knowledge, you know, we were just talking about it. Yeah, We were talking about the opportunity to take this and put it on a podcast. Well, when you look at all of the challenges that the time, effort, energy it takes to download, we've had technical issues. What do we do with those those uh, episodes where there's an issue? Do we have to re? When we look at all of those potential obstacles, it might be like it's just not worth it, or we need to look at another way to accomplish that opportunity, achieve that opportunity that we're looking at. And I think it's that reflection about it that really 
helps. And I, the challenge to me with that is that whenever I get, see an opportunity, I get all jazzed up. I'm excited. Oh, this is going to be great. I'm head down this way. It's really hard to step back and say, well, hold on. What are the opportunities over here? Or what are the obstacles that may be in the way that I can't see because I'm so excited about the potential of this opportunity in front of me that we miss out? And we sometimes make decisions that aren't with the full knowledge because the only where we've ever considered it is inside our head. Or we make decisions, Tom, based on the money. I've got to take this opportunity because someone's going to pay me to do something. And even though it's not what I want to do, or I don't know how to do it, or I'm not, I, I see trouble written all over this. And I, I, I don't know if I've shared this before, but my wife, every time I've had a bad situation with someone I've signed a contract with, my wife will say to me when I'm like, this is not working out. She'll be like, you told me this the day you signed the contract. I'm like, what are you talking about? She'll be like, you said... I got this new contract, I'm so excited, but it could be this. They may not be able to pay, or I feel like we may have some conflicts along the way, or even though I build it at this rate, I think it's gonna get really complicated. I saw those signals every time. I just didn't listen to them because in those situations, and this is going back a couple of years, I was focused more on the money than all the variables around it. You know, well, if I do this for this person, that closes this door for this person, or I only have so many hours a day. And if I do this thing, that's five hours a day for two weeks. That means I can't do this other thing. I typically in the past would be like money's money. Right and now it's funny. I was talking to someone yesterday, a new client, and she asked me, do you ever reject coaching clients? I was like, what do you mean? She's like, do you ever say no to someone? I'm like, I don't say no to them. I just make it less and less appealing to them. As I recognize that it's not going to work, that it doesn't check the boxes for me. If the person's not interested in really changing, they just want someone to solve all their problems without doing the work. I walk away from that person. She was like, wow, that must be really gratifying. I said, no, it's just survival. Yeah, you know, we put ourselves in bad situations, it's bad. Right. Life's too short. You know, there's enough hard work to build what each of us is trying to build that when we layer onto it, like the thing you said about the podcast, I could spend today, tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday uploading 20 of our podcasts, and that would be my whole four days. By the time download, edit, and Monday, we'd be like, oh, my God, that's great. You got 20 of those up and people would probably listen to them. It'd be great. But I balance that against all the obstacles there and the things I want to do in the next four days. I'm right. actually anxious to have a little time away to reflect, to come back on Monday, knowing that there's work to be done, important work to be done. Yeah. And I can take another look at it and see if this makes sense. You know, and I think sometimes we allow certain obstacles to carry more weight, which, which I understand. And sometimes the, that weight holds us back from doing something. You know, you talked about something about, you know, about cost, money. And sometimes I think we look at the cost of something. And we only are concerned about the cost. Now, is that important? Absolutely. If we're not thinking about what is the value that we're going to get? What's the transformation that it's gonna, that's going to happen? How much is this going to improve? Sometimes then it, with the cost, bless you, is not as critical or it's not doesn't hold the same weight except so often for us that's a huge part of decisions that we make is what is the cost because we see that as a huge obstacle rather than it just being it's an obstacle how can i overcome that is it worth overcoming for what it might provide you know if i want to go buy a new car all right, it's going to cost me more money, whether I pay it up front, whether I you know, make a monthly payment, whatever the case might be. I have to decide is having that going to be an add more value than what I am giving up in, the, in paying for it. 
you know, and and now that might not make as much sense, right? If we're not traveling as much, it's easier to Living stay that home, one. <laughs> right? And if if things in March turn around and now there's more events going, whatever, now I got to decide, okay, if I'm going to get out and about, I might need a car, and I, and it's worth to spend that money to do it. And I think taking the time to evaluate all of those things as we go through it. You know, and not just being, oh, wow, I want a new car. Great. Let me take it. Well, then it's going to sit in my parking lot for the next who knows how long, three, six months, you know, where there's only occasionally used. Is it really necessary at the moment? How about some comments, Tom? Sure. All right. First, I think this is John. He's reading a book. Um, he's reading a draft of the book I've been putting together. And uh, so I know he's working on that. Thank you, John. Tim says, to, or John says, Tom needs to do the do 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 thing. So, uh, you know, maybe tomorrow for the new year, we start the new year with uh, Tom doing it instead of me, or we could do it in tandem. Um, I'll think about that. Okay. Next up, we have my obstacle is Bob. He's like a six foot six obstacle. Yes, I'm six foot six for those of you who don't know. Um, I look shorter on this broadcast. I, I hunch down just so I don't tower over Tom. If it were normal, it'd be like this. But that doesn't make for a real good broadcast. Um, Tim says, that's why we use Waze. Bingo. Uh, John says, bingo, Tim Waze is the stuff. Uh, John says, the post office is the best run company on the planet. I think that's sarcasm. I'm, I've, I have a hunch. Then Lou says, like basketball, when you are holding the ball, one foot firmly planted in order to pivot, to see things in all 365 degrees. Yes, I love that that image of you've got the ball. What do I do? Do I take a shot? Do I pass it? Do I dribble? Do I stand here for a second? I like that. And then Tim says, there are times when talking on, taking on a client is the wrong thing to do. Knowing that you are not a good fit with the client and being willing to allow that client to find someone else can help your business by not putting you, you in a lose-lose position, regardless of the money involved. Yes, that's a hard lesson to learn when you're scrambling to make money. That is a challenge. Mortgage payment coming up in a couple of days and a client that doesn't fit real well. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, the, you know, those are those are when you have to look at. And again, yes, it might not fit well. And if you have no other options, you might say, you know what? I, it's not a great fit. But I think I can at least provide the value that they are going to pay me. And I have to suck it up and do the job that I, the best job that I can so that I can provide for myself, right? I mean, at some point, right. oh, we, yeah. we wanna make sure that we're able to still provide the value in that regard and be able to do what we need to do. I, I think sometimes we, it, it, it's hard. It's a lot easier to make those decisions if you feel like things are rolling along and you can say, you know what, I'm not really the right fit. I think until then, we have to go back and say, all right, what, what's the obstacle? If I, if, here's an opportunity, might not be a good one, but what are the obstacles in front of me if I t do take it or if I don't take it? And at least understanding that allows us to make more informed decisions. I think understanding that is the key, Tom. I, I think understanding the potential obstacles because that would probably, for me, that would affect my pricing. If I understand the obstacles that come come along, if there's a learning curve to do what a client needs for me to do, I've got to build that into my time. I've got to build that into the schedule with them. I've got to build that into the compensation, ideally. And I think that's where we often lose sight of it. We just go, well, you know, yeah, I can do that. Here, here's my normal rate. Well, if you're stretching in a new direction, it's not normal anymore. Right. Uh, so what's the one thing today, Tom? That one special thing you were going to get, you were going to shoot at me. I beat you to it. Um, right. That one thing we do this every day. We've done this for what? Is this day two hundred nineteen or two hundred twenty of doing this, Tom? This I, is two hundred seventeen. Two hundred seventeen. Okay, this uh, that doesn't sound right. I thought we were two seventeen yesterday. Sixteen yesterday. 
Okay, I'll trust you. So we've done this for 216 days. And to, uh, to, sorry, to, I just went back and checked Facebook. 217, you are correct. And each time we have this day, we try to give ourselves and the people who are watching one thing to think about that could change things, that would get you to shift your thinking just a little bit. Maybe it's a pivot slightly. Maybe it's a big pivot. So, Tom, what's that one thing today? Today's antidote. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, you know what? I, I would say that to be cautious about every opportunity that is in front of you. Because guaranteed there are obstacles there. And if you are too excited about an opportunity, if it's almost like our parents probably said to all of us, if it's too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true. You know and my I, father. <laughs> I think everybody's father told them that. And I and I think there's something to that in that if we blindly go into it, go into something without at least evaluating it, examining it and having that conversation with, let me take the other side. Why does this maybe not make sense? What is there down the road that might get in the way that make this not as great as it might be? Right. Here's a huge opportunity I have in front of me. It might be an opportunity for a new role, a new job. It might be an opportunity for to grow my business. It might be an opportunity for a new client. Well, how do I step back and evaluate that? And and really try to understand that not just, yeah, this is looks awesome. What's what what am I missing? And I think the challenge is that's really hard to do. We get so excited about this this opportunity. And then we lose sort of perspective on what are the things that could happen. We get so excited about this. Maybe it's a new client who's going to pay you a ton of money. And it's going to take you a ton of time. And that may eliminate you from doing other things that you want to do. Now, maybe you can't go and speak because this person needs you all the time. Now, maybe you'd be like, huh, I'm not sure I can do today's antidote because I've got to be at some place at eight o'clock every morning. And so I think that it can be, we can get so excited about those really good opportunities. Or, as just the same, those ones that we think are awful, we sort of push to the side and we don't really say, wait a minute, what might be not only an obstacle, but that obstacle might be something that is really beneficial. And so it's not as bad of an opportunity as I thought it was. So that would be my one thing is that I think really be cautious and not cautious, just take a moment. And if you are struggling and you can't see what those obstacles might be, find somebody to talk to about it. Because I guarantee with every opportunity, there is an obstacle. Might not be huge or it might be enormous and something that would really put you in your, put you out of your way. You know, I will. Do you uh, know anyone, Tom, that they can talk to? Well, my understanding is that there are a couple of people who they might there might be an opportunity for them to speak with. Um, so I think that I'll talk about that in just one second. Okay. Bob and I talked about this yesterday and here's an opportunity. We'll see what the, that I think we've explored the obstacles that may come from it. You know, we offer the one thing and that's our, that's what's real for us. You know, it's based on our knowledge, experience and perspective. I'm going to sneeze again, Tom. So you keep going. I'm sorry. Oh, so, but each person who listens to this may walk away with a different one thing. And I think we'd love to hear if your one thing is different because your, what's real for you might be beneficial to somebody else who is watching this now, watching it later. So please feel free to share your one thing in the comments below, because I think it would be beneficial to everyone and create this idea that this community is providing more uh, for each person who's a part of it. And there's so, no right or wrong. It's just it real. Could be related to what we're discussing. It could be completely off the wall. You know, while you guys were talking, I realized this thing. Right. You know, that I, I look forward to hearing other people's takes on this because it's going to help me and it's going to help you. Right. Absolutely. So, this is, this is what we want to try to add for the new year. We'll see 
if the opportunity makes as much sense as we think it does. Anyhow, I hope that everyone has a great, safe, happy, and healthy new year tonight. Um, and if you're interested in more conversations like this, if you're looking to find people who want to talk about these things and help us identify those obstacles that could be in front of us, please join the Ring of Renegades Facebook group if you're not already there. Just go to Facebook, search Ring of Renegades. It's a private group, but you can click to join it, tell us why you're a renegade, and you can be a part of these type of discussions. The other way is that um, we do offer laser solution sessions. And if you are interested in that and you're interested in saying, hey, I've got this great opportunity, but I'm not, I can't see the obstacles. We're happy to help you have that discussion. So or I don't see any opportunities. Correct. Well, All I right. see is obstacles. I would, I, we'd love to talk to you about that. Right. So we will hope you'll see you inside the Ring of Renegades Facebook group. If not, we will see you tomorrow. We, yes, we will be here New Year's Eve, unless Bob goes. No, New crazy. Year's Day is tomorrow. Oh, sorry. New Year's Day, unless Bob goes crazy with his, uh, his, uh, oh, now I've forgotten your drink. Darn it. It's going to be a good closing. Anyhow, we will see you here tomorrow. <laughs> old morning. fashions. Old fashions. That's it. Uh, we I will. Got some see Chex Mix already ready to go. <laughs> Bob's got a big night. Old fashions and Chex Mix. He's in good shape. All right, everyone. We will see you inside the Ring of Renegade Facebook group, or we'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern time for our next edition of today's antidote. Be safe, people. Be safe. Congratulations on completing 2020. We will see you in 2021. Carving your own path is tough. You want and need a community to offer you insights and advice, share inspiration, provide support, and save you time and money. But where do you find all that? Here's the easy answer. The Ring of Renegades Facebook group, where leaders, entrepreneurs, and business owners identify their next steps. Here's some of what you will find at the Ring of Renegades Facebook group. Just go to ringofrenegades.com and join today. Find and accomplish those next steps.